Greville Pabst from WPB Property Group joins you this morning. Good morning to you, Greville. Good morning, Libby. We're talking about one of my favourite things, one and two bedroom apartments. Yes, it's an interesting to topic and uh, certainly, you know, what is, uh, you know, one bedroom or a two bedroom? Did you know, I say is Sunday? Better? Today is Saturday. Duffy's just sent me a text. But I Saturday. said today was Saturday. I just said I was looking for someone who could whistle for <laughs> use on the Sunday program. Duffy, thank you. Sorry to interrupt. That's all right. So, yeah, one and two bedroom flats. And I suppose I'd like to put a bit of a caveat on that in that, you know, investment flats. Um, because, you know, not all flats perform the same. And one, in bed, one bedroom and your two bedroom actually perform differently as well. So when I like to talk about investment grade flats... I'm talking about those older style flats, those 1930s, 40s, 50s, 60s, up to the sort of the late 1970s. And certainly in suburbs that are, that are in the inner city of Melbourne and, and some of the, the best streets in Melbourne, they're the, they're the types of flats in the low density blocks that, that tend to show the best investment return. So what you're looking at, Inner suburban areas where there are lovely houses, but the odd block of flats is still there, the old block of flats or the 70s block of flats. Yeah, exactly. So they're areas where people want to live. They've got a nice infrastructure. Yep, exactly right. And, and the important thing is it must have a high underlying land value that, in the, that underpins the value of those flats. Uh, that, that's really the key for, for good investment. Position, position, position. Yes, it, it certainly is. Now... I suppose that, you know, what is the difference in terms of price point? Uh, that's that's a, an interesting topic because I like to say to our clients that you really need to have, for a good one-bedroom flat, you need to spend about $380,000. If you haven't got that sort of money, well, then th that's okay. You can buy something cheaper, but be minded that it's going to have a compromise. So, um, it, it, if it's cheaper, then it, and what I mean by a compromise, it may not have a car parking space or it might have a poor orientation or a poor floor plan or it mightn't be in the best street. So I like to recommend you know, a price point entry for a one bedroom at about $380,000. You can pay up to $500,000 for a really good one bedroom flat. Are you talking about, we did say at the start, pardon me, an investment property? Yeah. Yeah. Why would you buy a one-bedroom apartment investment property? My understanding was that you want two bedrooms, parking space. That's what we hear every Saturday. The ideal property, two bedrooms, parking space. Well, I think that, that, that comes, you know, funnily enough from our parents. You know, quite often our, our parents would say when we were young, you know, you must buy a really big house. Big is better. But it's not necessarily the case. Um, one bedroom flats in the inner city areas of Melbourne, for example, there's a real shortage of them and that really does drive up uh, the, the price. So you'll find that the one bedroom flat will actually perform in many cases the same and then on an investment yield basis actually better than some two bedroom flats. Um, so for example, you buy a, a, one bedroom, a one bedroom flat you might be able to rent that somewhere between $350 a week to $390 a week. And let's just say we, we pay you know, $400,000 for that flat. Your two bedroom, you might only get another $20 or $30 uh, extra per week in rent, but you've got to pay another $100,000 or $150,000 uh, to, to buy that. So your two bedroom, now you're going to pay between five fifty dollars to $700,000. So... You're paying all this extra money, but your rental return is not as, as good as what it is on a one bedroom. So what I mean by that in investment terms, you know, your yield, your investment yield, which is your, your sale price or your value divided into your rent, multiplied by 100 over one, is going to be you know, lower for a two bedroom than it is for a one bedroom. This is more demand for your one bedroom flats. And Speaking with a few property managers during, during the week, you know, they, they, they tell me as well that there's just really strong demand for your one-bedroom flats. In which areas and what demographic? Look, everybody wants to live in, in, uh, in, in, in the big village now or, or, or you know, close to the big village. So, you know, those suburbs like, you know, your South Yarras, your Richmonds, your Elwoods, your St Kilda's, you know, your Brunswick's, your Kensington's, uh, Armidale, Malvern... Turak, 
they're this, they're, that's where people want to live because they're close to your transport, you're close to your coffee, your lifestyle, walking distance to your, to your good schools, um, et cetera, et cetera. I would have thought if you were sending children to schools, one bedroom wouldn't be big enough. I'm sorry, but I have a thing about one bedroom flats. Yeah, look, yeah it, come it, on, it, convince it is, me. It, it convince is, me why they're a good investment option. Well, property is all about, it's all about scarcity, okay, and, and, and supply and demand. And there is a shortage of, of one bedroom flats. Interestingly, the, uh, the ABS statistics um, uh, I was reading the other day, it said that there are there are three there will be three million to three point six million single um, single occupied uh, dwellings you know by two thousand and thirty one so a lot more people are living alone um, so that's really you know causing this demand for for your, for your one bedrooms why aren't the returns better for two bedrooms just out of interest if the, you're saying you'll only get another twenty or thirty bucks a week for a second bedroom. Simply, there was more two-bedroom flats built. Okay, so so there, there's more supply. And if you talk to many inner-city uh, property managers, they'll tell you that the two bedrooms are you know, not in as high demand to rent than than the one bedders. I've got some text messages coming in. My niece bought an apartment in North Melbourne for two hundred and ninety-five thousand dollars and rents it for three hundred and fifty dollars a week. Good investment. So there you go. And then someone else has said, rubbish, one bedroom flat saturates South Bank and Docklands. I, th I think we need to, like, we need to sort of um, separate this market. When I say investment grade, I'm, I'm, I sort of put a caveat on that earlier. And I think we, we have to be very careful um, when, when we talk about some of the apartments in, for example, in the CBD, the high rise in, in uh, Docklands and in South Bank, because that's a, that's a whole different uh, market and, and it's a very it's a very complex market and there are a lot of different drivers and and I really do caution people um, you know buying some of those types those high rise uh, where, where there are lots of apartments in a in a tower there's a whole lot of different drivers and we just need to be very cautious when we're speaking about that as an investment would you be looking at one bedroom as being owner occupier or better as an investment thing well, that, that's the attractiveness of it. It, it, it appeals to an owner occupier because you, you want to enjoy, you know, the lifestyle and the closeness to the beach or whatever it is in the parklands. And, and so do your tenants. It's, you know, your tenants love it as well. I mean, you've really, um, mm. we have the same drivers and that, that's what really underpins a good investment property. I've got a great text saying, because adults don't want to share house, Libby. Jeez. Anyone who thinks differently is out of touch. But I must Apparently say, I did say it was Sunday, so I'll just go back here and say it's definitely Saturday, and I do beg your pardon if I've questioned your hearing, your auditory <laughs> skills. Today is definitely Saturday. Tomorrow is Sunday. I'll be on the air at 10 o'clock tomorrow, and further severe weather is forecast for the Portland area on Sunday leading into Monday. Yet today is Saturday. <laughs> Are go. we clear? You're I do apologise if I've said anything other than that. And I'm so glad that you're listening to 774 ABC Melbourne at 18 minutes to 9 o'clock. Greville Pabst is your guest. We're talking about one and two bedroom apartments. Why don't you give us a ring if you've got a question about it? 1300 222774. 1300 222774. Ange says, what about factoring in the exorbitant body corporate fees that mean little return for an investor? That's not the whole story. Yeah, that's you, that, that, That's a um, look, and, and that is a trap. And you've got to be very, very careful about those high owners corporation fees. When you, because it does impact on, you, on the investment performance of that flat. So if you're buying, for example, in one of those high-rise inner city apartments, you've got lift, lifts to service, you've got grounds to, to maintain, you've got swimming pools, you've got gymnasiums, you've got concierges. That impacts on your investment performance. We like to say that those old, some of those older style investment flats, you know, the owner's corporation fees are generally within a range of, of about $1,800 a year to $2,500 a year. In that range, is, is, is you, you know that if you're spending $2,500, well, the, the, the manager is actually maintaining uh, that premise as well. If it's less than $1,800, well, perhaps he's not doing his job, and you'll see that when you walk up. Mm. But... Some of the owners' corporation fees in some of these um, new shiny buildings in the inner city, you know, are you know can be you know ten thousand dollars 
you know, even I've heard up to $15,000 a year. Um, are they a good investment at that rate? Well, you know, uh, doubtful. Let's talk to John in Pasco Vale. G'day, John. Uh, good morning. Um, I'm in Pasco Vale South, actually, um, in just about two seconds from a tram stop. I'm in a one, one bedroom unit. We've been thinking of selling it for a while. Um, uh, it's got a carport and the body cork fees, by the way, about 900 a year. Um, I was just wondering what, um, what, what would be a, a reasonable sort of, um, price for this place, you know, if you, it, it's, it's a bit it's a bit hard to uh, to tell without me sitting here at the desk, John. Um, yeah, I'm, obviously it's a yeah. dumb question, really. But what I was going to say, it's got like a mm-hmm. it's got a, a like a two two door, it's a two entrance. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. it's large. It's like it's got a big um, living area and um, a large bedroom and very high ceilings. And I'd put it's the old style. How many real you know estate agents should you get to go through to give you an idea of a price? Because I guess John Greville can't really. Sight yeah, unseen, yeah. give you a quote, but, but it's I, the I, suburb, well, isn't it? It's the suburb yeah. and it's the position. Well, the location is what I was probably asking more so. I mean, I've got a rough idea what, what I'd like and what, what I think I can get, but I've had varying different, like $10,000 either way, you know, um, if, well, the people I've got to look at it. So um, I just, you know, just to, like, is the area, I'm say 10 k's out, 10 k's out of the city, basically. Look, it, 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 t- it ticks some of the boxes, John. I mean, are there many in the, in the block? Six. So, so yeah, that's that's very desirable. It's a, you know, as you said, it's it's an older style. It's it's got large rooms. That's certainly desirable. It's got a car space. Um, so so you know it t- it it does tick. You know the the sort of boxes that that we uh, the, that we like to see. But if 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 you're not trusting what what a couple of real estate agents are, are saying. The other option for you is to is to seek a you know an independent um, opinion from a uh, from a valuer. That's what you have to do, John. Thank you so much for calling. I've got a couple of text messages. How do you figure out how much rent to charge? I know you can't put a figure on this, but before Christmas, I want to rent a three bedroom house in Geelong West. Walk to shops, cafe, banks, post office, gym, park for kids, etc. So how do you work out after you've bought the place how much rent to charge? Well, that's where it's really important to, to find a good property manager. And it's a bit like when you buy a, a unit or a house, you do your homework, you look at auction results and you get a feel about you know, what a property is worth and, and, and valuers do the same. They look at comparable sales. So it's the same with rent. You really got to look at what are comparable rents. What are, what, what are the rents within the same street? What are the rents within the same block? And, and, and to get a fair idea as to what the rent should be. How do you find out what other people are paying? How do you find out? Well, we we you know we know yeah, and and, that, and that's the thing. You you can engage you know professionals to do that and and get that information for you. Right. Um. But but the, the other thing is is having a relationship with a with a, a, a having a chat to a couple of really good property managers will be you know quite open and um and discuss those points with you. Di from Carlton has sent an interesting text message. I'm a property manager in the inner city. One bedroom flats attract a much better a much better, in inverted commas, mature and financially reliable tenant. That's from Di. And then I get another one going, ah, you're dreaming. I've been trying to sell my one better for three months. Everybody wants a two better. So, you know, you've you go. It, 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 it's, it's, it, is a, it is a very interesting topic. But, you know, it, without seeing those particular properties, because, you know, like properties are not selling for certain reasons. You know, really good properties... There's all, they're always in demand, and it's hard it's to up. buy good ones. Yeah, indeed. Matthew from Bunyip. Hello, Matthew. Matthew's not there anymore. Why don't I take Noel? Hi, Noel. Hi, how are you going? Your turn. Thank you. Um, uh, my daughter is at university in Edinburgh in Scotland. Uh, it's very expensive paying uh, rental on the flat that she uh, uses in Scotland, and... Uh, I've been thinking about whether I should buy a two-bedroom flat over there and at worst I'd probably come even. I just wondered if uh, your guest could tell me uh, if there's any pitfalls in buying uh, properties overseas and whatever. Look, I, no, I, I, have tr- your area. I, I have trouble keeping up to date with, uh, with the, the Melbourne market and the Sydney market. It's um, Look, 
I, I like to, I, 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 if I don't know, um, you know, you know, I, I just there's enough investment opportunities here that, that'll give you a really good return and good capital growth right here in Melbourne without going to mining towns or overseas. Um, or regional areas uh, to, to try and chase a high yield. But you know what? I think it's well worth a trip to Edinburgh to <laughs> actually have a look because I'm sure it's a tax deduction somewhere along the line <laughs> if you're going to buy an investment property. Well, well, look, yeah, but look, she's there for quite a few years and uh, even if I came even, it's better than losing the money I'm paying monthly. Sounds like know? great fun. Yeah. Sounds like great fun. You must go and visit often. Thank you yeah. for calling. It's fine. Uh, I've got text messages here saying the, re the real estate industry is full of dangerous spin. They keep quoting yield on property without including costs. The real rental yield on property is 2 to 3% after costs. Would you agree? Look, it, it is a gross yield. And for, the, for a one or two bedroom flat, you know, we, we, we try to chase you know, yields within, you know, this does sound low, but you know, on a gross basis, 3.7 to 4.2%. But that you can't just say that in isolation because in order to get that that you know, that low yield, you must get high capital growth. Okay. Now, in Melbourne, we have a you know uh, the average long term average growth is about seven seven point seven percent. Okay, over over a, a, a long term horizon. Um, so so I really do caution if if you are going to if you're going to chase a low yield. You have to get the capital growth. Now that that is that's really important. The two go together, and and it's it, a yield. A gross yield is actually a risk rate. So um, you know the, the the lower the yield is generally, providing that the rents are to market, that 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 is a generally regarded as a gilt edged uh, property because it, there's expectation that there's going to be capital growth. Tom in Glenroy, <clears throat> pardon me, do beg your pardon. Tom in Glenroy has sent a text message calling me darling, which means I have to read it to you. Can I ask you, please, Greville, if there is a bubble? I just need an answer, says Tom, especially for flats. There are a number of subsectors of, of, of this market. It, it's a big market. Sub-bubbles? Uh, well, yeah, there's, there's a, there is sub-markets. And, um, you know, there, there are, in, in the flat market, there are, there are some areas... And this is why I, that caveat at the start, okay? Because there is a shortage of, of really good quality, older style flats in the really good um, areas of inner city Melbourne. But there is an oversupply or, or, or worry, some worrying signs, certainly um, in, in, you know, in, in the CBD, South Bank uh, and Docklands. So there's potentially a bubble in, in, in that market. Um, that, that, is a, that, that is a market that concerns me greatly. And, and over the last 10 years, there have been very few examples of uh, a, you know, a growth profile, an attractive growth po profile in those th those high-rise inner city apartments. They're, they're great lifestyle, they're a great place to own, and occupy and live, but just be careful when you're, when you're looking at that as an investment. You're talking about Docklands? Talking about Docklands, CBD. All of that. South Bank, yep. Eight minutes to nine o'clock. Your guest is Greville Pabst from W. BP Property Group. We're talking about one and two bedroom flats as a starting point at least. John from Maryborough. Hello. Oh, good morning. How are you this morning? Very well, thank you. Good. Thanks for your call. I've listened. Uh, thank you for taking it. Um, I've listened to this discussion with some interest. Um, you're talking about investment, not living in a cottage or a one bedroom flat. You're talking about investment. That's what I thought we were talking about investment. Yeah. Right. But well, someone we, has to live in it. Well, if we're talking about investment, um, why doesn't your person who you're talking to... You ask him. Oh, I'll ask him. Why don't you talk about investing the 350000 that you would in a one-bedroom flat into shares on the Australian Stock Exchange? The shares don't need painting. They don't have plumbing. They don't need to have to be rented out. They don't have maintenance costs. And, the, and if you bought $350,000 worth of NAB shares today... Oh you would get a capital return and a yield return of in excess of 7.5-8%. But John, you know why he isn't saying that? Because this segment is about property. I know. It's, well, he's talking about investment. But he's talking about property, I and that's what, that's what we're doing but this week. But the, the other thing is, John, you can't put a share script over your head 
<laughs> okay, so you've, you, you've got to live somewhere. Okay, let's take another call, shall we? You're proving controversial this morning, Greville. Did you know that? Did you know that that would happen with this topic? I didn't think so. Hello, Jen. Hi there. Your Hi. turn. How's Ballarat today? Uh, warmer than it was yesterday, which is always good. What was your question? Uh, uh, I was just wondering, I'm looking at buying a one or two bedroom property over the next couple of years, and I've, I've had a lot of advice saying that you're better off um, buying it as an investment property and renting somewhere else to live than you are as an owner occupier. Just with the tax breaks and things involved. I was wondering if you might be able to comment on that. So. It's just a manoeuvre. Do you buy somewhere, let someone else live in it, and then you pay off someone else's mortgage, or yes. do you just live in it yourself? Yes. You've really got to get some uh, some tax advice. advice. Yeah, tax <laughs> advice from your own account, from your accountant, because there is, a, no, I believe, a, a period in which you can live there yourself and then not trigger CGT concerns later. But if you, um, uh, with your owner occupied, but if you if you then renting it out well, then it becomes an investment property. Then when you do go to sell it down the track, you're going to attract uh, CGT, capital gains tax. And you see, this is the beauty of Hillary's program because I'm sure next week you'll either have a tax consultant or you'll have someone who can advise you with shares. It all relates to what goes into your pocket. And it just so happens that this morning we're doing real estate. I've got a text message for Lee, which relates to a previous caller. I lived in the UK for a couple of years. Quite a few parents bought in Edinburgh, two or three bedroom, while their kids were at uni. They let out spare rooms to the other students. I know a couple that did that. They were called the Middletons. They had a girl called Kate and they let out a room to a little boy called Wills and look what happened. So many romances happen at university in Edinburgh. My son, says a text message, has a rundown two bedroom unit. Should he renovate before selling? Is it worth it financially? Interesting question. It is an interesting question and one we get every day. It, it is, um, I, I suppose, the first thing to be cautious of is, is the structure that you, that you own that property in because, of course, self-managed super funds, you've got to be very careful about spending you know, on capital to, to renovate. Uh, you also need to be very careful about overcapitalizing, okay, because um, depending on where you are and what location, you know, just because you spend a dollar, uh, you know, there's an old saying, you know, cost doesn't equal value. So you've got to be careful where you spend the money um, in order to get that return back. I've got a text message saying, surely one never invests in a property that you wouldn't live in. But you would, wouldn't you? I mean, you might buy a one-bedroom apartment that's near a university or so for a student to live in if you have a family no, living well, in a completely different suburb. I mean... I, I, like, no, I, I like to say that, you know, properties actually have feelings. Now, it might sound a, a, a strange thing to say, that, but we all know that when you walk into a property and you love it, you get, you get tingles, yeah. okay? And, 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 and that, that, that emotional feeling of that property is the same for tenants that go in and it, and it attracts high demand from tenants and, and, and for somebody that lives there, it has the same feeling. Yeah. So I like to advise, you know, my, my clients that would you put your, uh, at some point in your life, would you put your son or daughter in that property would, would, would you be comfortable putting your, your, your mother in that property? Disclaimer, the information provided is general in nature and shouldn't be considered personal advice. Seek independent advice before making any investment decisions. Text message saying we could have given the man asking about property overseas some advice about who he might be able to help him rather than brushing him off. I thought we did. I thought we said fly over. Take a look. It is three minutes to nine o'clock after the news pet segment. Dr. Hugh Worth will be talking about pets and what they're trying to tell us when they act up inside. You've been keeping your pets in more than usual because it's been so cold. Have they been naughty? Dr. Hugh Worth will be joining you after the news to help you discipline them or indeed psychologically assess what their needs may be. Should they be biting, weeing or helping themselves to the fridge? Good morning to you, Charles. Oh, g'day. Um, we're thinking about buying a one or, one or bit two bedroom apartment to put in our super fund. Um, we do notice, though, that there are. A What's that noise, Charles? I don't know. I think it's you. <laughs> we, we do notice there are a huge number of um, ap new apartments being built, and we wonder what this will do to vacancy rates coming up in the next few years or even yield. We've got to go, Charles, because of that noise, but Greville will answer that question. 
Yeah, n- need to be, you know, when you're buying investment grade uh, apartments, you, you need to be very careful about, you know, who are your neighbours? What's at the back? You know, what, what, are the, what are the height controls in that area? And we, look, I see that, you, you see that in, you know, some areas like, you know, look, look, at, look at South Yarra. There's certain areas around, you know, River Street, Tivoli, where, you know, in the old um, Jack Chia, Como site there, um, you know, you have all these high rides. Now, if you, if you are living close to that, I mean, do you, your amenity is going to be affected by perhaps some overshadowing or your views are going to disappear. So you need to be buying sort of areas that have heritage overlays, that have a control, height controls in them. That really underpins and protects you and it protects your investment. Thank you, everyone, for calling. Just a quick comment from Jane. Hi, Jane. Oh, hi. I, I have a place in Edinburgh and I would say to the caller, Get local legal advice about property because the tenancy laws there are much tighter than ours. And if his daughter had to come back, he could find himself with quite a problem, financial and legal. So he needs to fly over. He needs to go and talk to a local property lawyer specifically about tenancy law. I'm sure we said that. Thank you so much, Jane. Great to hear from you. Thank you. Bye. That was Jane calling. Thank you, Greville, for joining us this morning. Thanks, Libby.